guys welcome back to my channel so IGN has got a review for Lies of P I want to it looks like this is something that I would want to play because it reminds me of Elden Ring and Elden Ring is the first I guess Souls game if you will that I played and I didn't think I was gonna like it but I really actually enjoyed it didn't finish it because it's like never ending so at one point I'm gonna get back to it um but it kind of reminds me of that and I don't believe that this is as long as Elden Ring. Um, I haven't played the demo, so I do want to play the demo. I think it's still available. But I'm interested to hear what they have to say. And I don't think this is going to spoil it for me at all. But anyway, let's go ahead and check this out. Can you hear me? You know that we've entered a new era in the increasingly crowded Souls-like arms race when we're now turning classic children's stories into dark, twisted, bloodborne pseudo-sequels. But hey, here we are. Yes, Lies of P is yet another game inspired by the unforgiving From Software masterpieces that have captured the hearts of so many, myself included. But it's also an undeniably impressive standout amid a sea of games chasing the Souls-like trend. It does suffer from some uneven difficulty and overly linear level design, but its impressive story, extremely well-tuned combat, and memorable areas and boss fights means that this isn't one you should miss out on if there's a Bloodborne-shaped hole in your life. It's fair to say that sometimes Lies of P emulates its inspiration so closely it feels like someone else is pulling its strings a little too forcefully mm. but that puppet show is still a whole lot of fun to join in it's both praise and criticism to say that lies of p follows the blueprint pioneered by from software down to the finest detail with precious few deviations just look at the ui and menus oh yeah hmm, that's and doesn't this look like bloodborne i've never played bloodborne i heard Combat it's good is, though of course a methodical dance of attacks and parries designed with difficulty in mind and it sticks so close to the script that it got to the point where I'd meet a seemingly friendly character and think, ah, this is the one who's going to betray me later, with full confidence that I was spot on in that assessment. There's even a major boss mm -hmm. with the same name and rough appearance as a Dark Souls boss, which is honestly just kind of hilarious. That's interesting. One of the ways I've never it heard does of that happening. Apart, though, is with its story, which is a dark reimagining of Carlo Collodi's Pinocchio. You know, the story about a mischievous puppet known for telling falsehoods and longing to become a real boy. A real boy! Lies of P's version takes a lot of gory and depressing yeah. liberty in its version of the classic tale, but it's got some nice nods to its inspiration. There are these mm. untrustworthy mammals, plus a neat mechanic where you have to choose to tell lies or the truth. That'll have an impact on the outcome of your story. Which sounds interesting to me. I like that. Oh, and the soundtrack is outstanding. Get a load of this. That said, this style of game is sounds built good. for having the most comprehensible stories, and Lies of P isn't wholly an exception to that rule, but it does try harder than most. There's a whole bunch of dialogue and cutscenes that kept my interest throughout my first 30 hour run. In fact, of all the distressing and enigmatic stories yeah. I've seen in this genre, this is definitely among my favorites. It's got some interesting twists and turns, and a few memorable characters too. Genius never rests, except for beauty rests. <laughs> As you'd expect, you'll split your time hacking your way through mm. levels where practically everything in sight wants to kill you and taking on much more formidable bosses. And Lies of P largely nails both of those genre pillars. Whew. The city of Krat is memorable and dystopian, while also continuously reminding you that you're playing out an iconic fairy tale about puppets. It comes complete with your cricket sidekick, Gemini, and your puppet-making father, Geppetto, who always reminds you to be a good boy right before he sends you on missions to butcher everyone in your path. <laughs> but be a good boy. You'll visit the 
poison swamp level that every soul's life is legally required to include, mm. and this exhibition hall with hopeful depictions of a future that clearly didn't work out quite as planned. Each is thoroughly enjoyable to stab your way through. Another item on the checklist is some memorable and usually disgusting boss fights, and Lies of Peas got Ew. those in spades. I won't show you anything spoilery, I promise, but they're always enjoyable, even though they're all pretty straightforward encounters where you whittle down a health bar. It would have been nice to have one or two encounters where they mix things up with a puzzle or trick you've got to figure out to best your opponent. Those are always my favorite. For okay. better or worse, much of Lies of P's combat draws clear inspiration from Bloodborne specifically, with a couple minor tweaks. You can't restore health lost from direct attacks by striking back at your enemies like in Bloodborne, but you are given the ability to partially block some of that incoming damage, then counter to restore the chip damage you absorbed. That's the result good. is a similar meta, where aggressive gameplay is encouraged. That keeps fights moving along at a quick pace, but it also discourages more defensive playstyles, which tend to be my go-to in Souls Likes. Even so, this feisty combat is extremely fun, balanced, and well-tuned. But you're definitely boxed into playing in a specific way. Playing as a ranged magic user from Dark Souls is a no-go here. Another idea borrowed from Bloodborne is that your melee weapon is assigned to your right hand, while your left is reserved for a utility weapon. This one turns your robotic left arm into a Winter Soldier-esque tool of destruction. Ah. That ends up being a pretty darn clever take on that mechanic. You might decide to close gaps quickly with the quick and effective puppet string. Ooh, nice. Or blow up deranged puppets from afar like this. Or my personal favorite, block incoming attacks and dish out damage in kind with a fiery explosion that triggers when they hit your shield. It's especially hmm. cool that each of these tools can be upgraded with additional effects. Check this out. Ooh! What is the new stuff? Name nice. a completely awesome weapon crafting system that really lets Lies of P distinguish itself within a very crowded genre. Have you ever wanted to attach a giant saw blade to a rapier's handle so you could jab with it like you're fencing? Well, it's probably not advisable at all. It but knock heavy. yourself out. How about attaching Mjolnir's hammer to the end of a rusty pipe? Go for it, man. You do you. Mm. With dozens of possible combinations, you're given quite a bit of freedom to make some silly or surprisingly effective oh my stuff. Gosh. As certain stats and abilities from your chosen hilt and blade combine nice. for a unique combat experience. It's a bit of a shame, though, that the best weapons available are legendary tools that can't be disassembled and reforged into new weapons. And many of these are so much more powerful than anything you can build that you're sort of disincentivized from actually engaging with the crafting system the longer you play. Uh. Of course, the main thing that defines any good souls like is how soul-crushingly difficult it is. And Lies of P has mixed success in this regard. On one hand, nearly all of the world exploration where I was fighting run-of-the-mill evil puppets and gross monsters was disappointingly easy, to the point where death was a rare occurrence throughout my playthroughs. Mm. That's not a bad thing for me. The same can be considering, said of most yeah. fights, which Souls veterans can expect to be without breaking too much of a sweat. They're usually big, slow, and stupid creatures who are easily confused when you move behind or underneath <clears> them. <throat> and they telegraph all their attacks like they're in the Ew. WWE. But then I'd encounter the occasional showdown where the difficulty spiked up dramatically without warning, and I'd die 20 or 30 agonizing deaths on a single boss. Wow. I to wonder if I just wasn't properly leveled or something, which was never the case, I just needed to get good. Those specific bosses stand in such stark contrast to the much milder exploration sections that it can be quite jarring. And I often felt like the levels preceding a tough boss didn't properly prepare me for that gauntlet. Mm. Most likely, my skills probably atrophied during the stretch of mostly undemanding skirmishes in between the dramatically more difficult boss fights. Lies of P has also inherited some of the clunky roots of the genre along with its strengths. Among other things, there were a few times where I phased through the environment in a weird way, and enemies have a weird habit of just despawning right in front of me, That's like they were fading away during the season finale of a long-running high school TV drama. 
Thankfully, none of these issues were particularly widespread, so they're unlikely to drag down an otherwise perfectly enjoyable adventure, especially since performance is otherwise rock solid. I maintained a perfectly stable frame rate at every point, which definitely isn't a given in this genre. Lies of P might not branch out particularly far from its Souls-like inspiration, but like a marionette controlled by a skilled puppet master, it plays the part extremely well, in a wonderfully dark fantasy world. It must be said that its uneven difficulty didn't always make me feel like an underdog, especially when playing as a brawny, overpowered version of Pinocchio with a massive weapon. And combat pigeonholed me into a specific playstyle while the levels are less open and twisting than most. But with an awesome weapon crafting system, some really memorable boss fights, and one of the better stories we've seen in this genre, I can enthusiastically recommend you spend your time hanging out with Geppetto and friends. Okay. If you've been waiting for a Bloodborne remaster or sequel that may never come, Lies of P is the next best thing. For more, check out our reviews of Starfield and Trine 5 A Clockwork Conspiracy. And for everything else, stick with IGN. All right. Well, some people may not like the thought that a lot of these boss fights are that easy, but then you get like a couple of them where you just feel like you just can't beat. That's not a bad thing for me because you guys have seen me play, especially with Elden Ring, how many times I die trying to fight a boss. For me, it would be good. But I feel like that also kind of maybe takes away the challenge that you need to kind of get better with your fighting and your battles to battle and fight the bigger ones or the harder ones so i don't know some people may like it some people may not for me i'm all right with it when it comes to lies of p leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think let me know if you guys have played or will play lies of p if you are interested in it um leave your comments down below and if you haven't done so subscribe to my channel hit like share and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified whenever i pop up on your feed i'll see you guys later Toodles.